Just off Highway 9 in southwest Oklahoma, along Main Street in Hobart, is a museum dedicated to one of Oklahoma's most famous military leaders. But it's more than just a collection of memorabilia. The goal behind it is to preserve and teach history while inspiring the next generation of leaders. Since it first opened on Veterans Day weekend four years ago, the General Tommy Franks Leadership Institute and Museum has grown to fill three buildings in downtown Hobart. Inside these doors are displays documenting the life of Tommy Franks, an Oklahoma boy who rose to become commander of the U.S. Central Command. The museum provides a chronological look at the events that shaped and influenced Frank's career. He was born in Winniewood, Oklahoma. And um, I, I love the quote, my understanding of the world and its consequences of right and wrong, good and evil began when I was five in Oklahoma. Warren Martin is executive director of the museum. Martin says although Frank's wasn't born in Hobart, his wife Kathy grew up in Kiowa County and the community reflects the general's small town values. The museum includes exhibits illustrating Frank's tours of duty in Vietnam, Korea and the Middle East. But it was the terrorist attacks of 9-11 that thrust him into the wars that defined his military career. This was a moment that changed U.S. history forever. Uh, it was a pivotal moment in our country. And, uh, and so from this point forward, you see a dynamic change in our culture, in our country, and in our military. Franks led the attack on the Taliban in Afghanistan in response to 9-11 and was the commander of U.S. forces during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Uniforms from Franks' band of brothers, the generals who prosecuted those wars, are on display, as is Afghanistan's first presidential ballot following the defeat of the Taliban. But Martin says their goal is to do more than get people inside these walls. Our vision is to use the museum, use history as the foundation by which we invest in the next generation of leaders, uh, especially here in America, but worldwide. The Institute offers workshops for high school students, both at the museum and in area schools, to help develop leadership skills and abilities. In addition, 50 of the nation's top high school students are invited to Oklahoma each summer for a four-star leadership conference, which includes face-to-face -face meetings with national and international leaders. In 2011, we had King Abdullah of Jordan, who uh, uh, flew in and spent 45 minutes speaking to the students of the four-star leadership program and taking questions from them, an open environment where they were able to uh, ask the king any question that they wanted to ask him. In the middle, we have a picture of General Franks with King Abdullah of Jordan. There's also a traveling road show that brings the museum experience to schools across the state. Students can experience an array of artifacts emphasizing cultural diversity. We have, uh, you know, the, the different ceremonial dresses from the different cultures. But we also have things like Barbie. Now, it's a Saudi Arabian Barbie that's dressed in Saudi Arabian clothes, but uh, it's important when you're talking about cultural diversity to really point out there are differences between our cultures, but there are also great similarities. The museum's newest addition is a rare find, this W-48 AFAP nuclear artillery shell is one of only four still in existence. During the 60s, Franks commanded a unit that would have fired these nuclear shells in the event of a Soviet attack in Europe. Of course, this is at the height of the Cold War, and uh, the Russian forces, USSR, was just right across on the other side of Germany. And so these were positioned along the front lines. He actually had six uh, of these devices that were a part of his battery that he was in charge of. This shell was only used for training purposes, but it will be the centerpiece of a new exhibit opening December 10th. The exhibit called The Life Atomic, Growing Up in the Shadow of the A-Bomb, examines the fears surrounding the Cold War and what Americans too. experienced living family. under the threat of nuclear Armageddon. Martin still remembers those days. You would have uh, duck and cover drills where uh, you would simulate, what would you do in the case of an atomic attack? And they would have us crawl under our desk. One of the highlights of the exhibit is a mock fallout shelter, 
designed to resemble what a typical in-home shelter would have looked like during the Cold War. We want to invite you to come and to climb up in our fallout shelter with us and we're going to have paper ready for you on this typewriter and we want you to give us your memory of growing up in uh, the shadow of the A-bomb. The exhibit also shows how the bomb and the uncertainties of nuclear radiation influenced popular culture. When man entered the atomic age, he opened a door into a new world. What we'll eventually find in that new world, nobody can predict. The exhibit will run through January 19th, providing visitors a chance to experience what it was like living with the atomic bomb.